good afternoon and welcome to CNU TV. This is a special edition that I'm bringing to you from the Fit and Fine Gym here at Dome Pilatu in Accra. Um, you can look around and you see almost everything that you need to use to keep fit is here. We'll find out who is the brain behind this and then we we'll go deep into it to find out what physical fitness is and its effect. We are back shortly. Welcome back. With me here today is a gentleman who has been a physical trainer for quite a number of clubs in Ghana and national teams. He was a physical trainer for the Ghana under 17 side, the Black Starlets, when they went to the 2017 World Cup in India. He's been a physical trainer for Uganda under 17 and under 20 sides before and trains a number of Black Stars players whenever they are my guest. Nana, good afternoon. Bro, good afternoon, bro. I believe you're fine. I'm fine, thank it's you. It's been a long time. Yale. Taribu! <laughs> 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 well, that's the name we used to call him when we were in school. Um, Nana say who we usually call Taribu West. He was a former player. You look at him right now, you may think that he's not played football before. Nana say is a gentleman who completed a quite SDA senior high school. Looking at him, uh, you may think that he has not played football before. But he was the captain for the school team. He traveled out of the country and he came back looking so big like this. The first time I saw him, I was like, see that terrible, what is happening? I never knew. But he worked for the British Army. British Army. And so you can clearly see where all the ideas are coming from. Um, Sinataribu, bro, bro. you are into fitness now. Yes. But tell us a little about yourself and how <coughs> you got into this. Into this. Um, as you said, uh, my full name is Derek Oseusu. Everyone call me Nase, but Taribu West is literally anyone that calls me that, that means they, I know them from school. And um, my fitness started from when I was in secondary school for my school i was running for my school immediately after football in 1999 i had the chance to go to london to live life in london then through that i joined the army but my love for fitness really started when i joined the army and in the army we have these people called rsm rsm is like regimental size major and they are more or less like the bosses of the camp and there was this size major that i can't say he didn't like me but anytime he sees me he punished me for no reason. Then one time we went to the gym train, we had a, a battle. I saw some of these PTIs. PTI in the army means uh, physical training instructor. Punishing the RSM, like do press up, do this. And I thought, ah, so someone can actually punish this, <laughs> this man. I don't know how to do this job, so, you know what I mean? So um, my love for fitness came from how I saw some of these PTIs handling some of our top bosses, like literally, telling them what to do and all that. And I thought, you know what? I want to do this. I want to train people. I want to feel like a boss. But when I got into it, I realized that it's not you feeling like a boss. There's more to it. It's, there's a discipline side of it. So that aspect of me thinking that as soon as I get into fitness, I can punish people, it went out the window. Because it was more to it than just punishing people or putting people through pain. When we talk about physical fitness or fitness as a whole, what is it and how important is it to the human body? Okay, uh, physical fitness is in two parts, the professional part and the layman's part. Uh, physical fitness is the condition of being physically fit and healthy. That's the layman part of things. And the professional part of it is the, is the quality to be suitable to be able to play a role or to be able to fulfill a task. And the fulfillment of tasks, that's when football and all the other aspects comes in. Do you know what I mean? So physical fitness is just being fit mentally, physically, and everything else. Mm. Now, um, having explained this, uh, bring us up to speed. How important, because I know we need to speak about a lot of things. You have been a physical trainer for a lot of clubs. You've been a physical trainer for national teams. What goes into that? A lot. 
you know, a lot goes. Now, I, I, let me concentrate on football. Football has evolved so much that physical coach or fitness coaches has become literally one-on-one -on -one with coaches. Why? Because you need to play a role to support a coach so that the coach can concentrate on the football side of things so that he can leave the fitness side of things for one man to do. Physical fitness has become so important that those go, gone are the days when we have coaches that let people run around, run around, run around, then they go and play football. You get endurance from it, but you don't get nothing. Because when it comes to the aspect of football, there's agility, there's strength, there's conditioning, there's balancing, there's flexibility, there's coordination. Mm -hmm. And all these things need to be handled by a particular person. Do you know what I mean? And so, and so that they can always report to the coach who is fit, who is not fit, all these things come into play. Because don't forget that players can reach their peak. And when they reach their peak, it's not the role of the coach to manage their peakness or their fitness level. There should be someone who monitors that side of things. Peakness of every player lasts for 90 days. So let's say, let me, I'm, 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 I know I'm going in depth, but let's say we, we are playing in a league. In a league, I can do preseason make sure the players at least are at 90 percent of their fitness before the league starts mm. why because as they are playing week in week out their fitness levels will go up you can come up from then it will get to a point whereby they're in their peak that's when you need managing that's why sometimes you see players like christian Ronaldo. there are some matches that they will bench them for no reason so that they can restore a bit of fitness mm. so that they because when a player reaches his peak there is, is, there's a thin, um, a thin line between them breaking out and them being fatigued. You know what I mean? So when it comes to physical fitness in, say, football, it's very, very, very important. I understand that Ghana, we don't have a lot of money, so a lot of teams don't have fitness coaches. And I will say this, the fact that someone can tell you, jump, squat, do this, doesn't make them a fitness coach. You need someone who is qualified to do that because there's a lot of science behind it. Mm. A lot of science. And if someone gets some of these science wrong, it will cause whether the team or a national team a big problem. You've mentioned how important physical fitness is for footballers. I know you train a lot of footballers yes. on the blind side of a lot of Ghanaians. Play. In, in, in helping coaches to win games because a lot of people don't seem to even place importance on warm-ups but from what you are saying it appears warm-ups are very very important um warm-ups are so 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 important actually warm-up can win you a game in the first 10 minutes oh really? yes in the first 10 minutes why because if your opponent doesn't warm up well it will take them time to warm into the game and that's one, something that some coaches believe that oh it's okay let them go and play then they warm up why because it takes microsecond to score a goal sure. one so before the players will warm up there's a goal okay so for you to warm up warm up are very very important to take the so for your body to be able to take the stress of the game i'm talking about agility need to be in the warm-up jumps need to be in the warm-up coordination need to be in the warm-ups um, we're talking about uh, um, 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 strength need to be in the warm-up. All these particular flexibility need to be in the warm-up. And warm-up good. And what it is is that warm-up is something you have to inculcate in things that are going to happen in the game. Okay. So everything, that every movement that's going to happen in the game of minutes. So that it prepares the body. It prepares the whole body. Because there are movements that happens in the football game that on a normal day, if we are told to do, you can't do. So you, you take them from a little warm-up, as in little endurance. You take them to speed. You take them to uh, coordination, a bit of agility, flexibility, and balancing. So sometimes you see coaches, when they are got, like, premier, they do this, then they do that, just to make sure they get their balancing. Why? Because the heat of the game, you don't know the speed your opponent is going to go to. So you need to be, you need to be up to speed. That as soon as you start, boom. Same way warm-ups or let's say substitutes. Because substitutes are game changers. If you take, that's why now you see a lot of games when um, um, a footballer gets off the bench to go and warm, you see a fitness coach following them to move, 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 make sure they get up to speed. Mm -hmm. Reason being that they will just go and do anything come in the game and thinking they warm up in the game. But what it is is that they need to be up to speed to meet the demands of the game as the game is going on. Mm. 
That's why sometimes you can get something to you come in, boom, game changer. Sure. Why? Because he warm up very well. Very well. Oh, really? So you can actually watch the warm up of a team and you feel that they will lose the game. <laughs> so many times. I've, I've, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I was in Kotoko, uh, there were so many teams who were going to play with, and I see their warm-up, and I know that it, it's a done deal. At the same time, if you have a, a good fitness coach, because a teams are got, some teams are going to come, and they're going to have a good coach that can counter the tactics of your coach, and that time, what can win you the game is fitness. Why? Because literally, after an hour, after 16 minutes, people's fitness start dipping. Mm. But if you have a good coach, after 60 minutes, that's when that fit team is taking their second breath. You know, so they will force the opponent to make mistakes because what, what, what brings mistakes is tiredness. But tiredness come in, mistakes come in, that means lack of concentration. Boom, we score. Yapon. Wow. You know what I mean? So when you get a good, that's why you see some of these big teams scoring some of these smaller teams at die minutes. Die minute of the game, they are Manchester United, Liverpool. I mention these teams because I like them so much because they can play week in, week out, and you can hardly see injuries. Why? Because the players are being managed well. You know what I mean? They are being managed really, really well, such that it's, it's, it's easy for them to go through a whole season with no injuries. Mm. I'll give you another example. When I was in Kotoko, there was a player called Jordan. Yeah, Jordan Opoku. Jordan Opoku. Good. He, he will testify to this. When I mean, he, age wasn't on his side. Most of the players were younger than him. So what we used to do is we would train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I would not let him train so that he can rest and prepare himself for games. Or sometimes if the, the game we played this week was so hard, next week he doesn't play. Why? Because we needed him in the game. So we needed his fitness level to be up there. You know what I mean? So uh, uh, the role of a fitness coach is very, very key in anything. Now, from what you're saying, it appears to be fit, you need to go through a routine. Yes. And that will surely involve diet. Definitely. So how related are they? As a fitness coach, you do a bit of, you see, to be a fitness coach, you do a bit of science, human, human body, you do a bit of uh, dieting so that you know what is good for your footballers to get strength, to get energy. So literally, you work hand in hand. As a fitness coach, you work with the coach, you work with the dietitian. Why? Because when their fitness level dips, you'll be the one that's going to be called. Mm. Not a dietitian. Sure. So literally, you don't tell him exactly what they should eat, that eat body or eat banche, but you tell him the nutrients they, they need. Want. All right, let me give you an example. When we are training, week in, week out, what does protein do? Protein builds and repair. So literally, normally, after training, it's always good for them to eat something with protein so that all the wear and tear that has happened during training, they can recover from it and prepare themselves for the next day. Oh, okay. But during matches, I don't advise they, they eat a lot of protein. Why? Because the body mechanics have to go through a long process to break it into energy. But what I always, they have to eat high quality carbohydrate. High quality carbohydrate means that because carbohydrate is the easiest nutrient that goes through a system called glycolysis. Glycolysis becomes glycogen. Glycogen becomes glucose in normal terms. Then they use it during matches. Because during matches, when you have a lot of glucose in you, that means you have, you have a lot. <laughs> I'm not surprised, he was a science student. <laughs> so, when you have a lot of energy, that means high performance. Why? Because when you don't have enough energy in you, your body mechanism have to go through to get your excess fat to use as energy during performance. And what does it mean? It means fatigue, it means you get tired. That's why even maybe first half, second half, and even tennis players, when they are playing, you see them eating like banana. Mm -hmm. What What's in the banana? You have B6, B12, potassium, magnesium in banana. Wow. So, and it's the easiest nutrients that break straight into your bloodstream in five minutes. You know what I mean? So, so your energy levels to be up there, for your performance to be up there, all these little, little signs are involved in because they give you an, a little oomph of energy to beat your opponent. We, 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 we will be coming to the closure of our discussion, but it's getting more interesting. 
let me let me let me ask this question. You watched the Black Stars at the 2019 Afcon. Yes, right? yes, I did. Physically, were we were, were we fit? Were we there? This honestly is a tough question, and I say it's a tough question. No, but I, I, I know I, 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 my, my reason is I don't want. Because there are people who support people. It's a very sensitive topic. But I want to talk about it as a Ghanaian because I support football and so, I know so I the energy to, levels. I want to explain something. Okay, you. good. I am asking this question because I was in Egypt with mm -hmm. a team. And at a point in time, I realized that even on the field of play, our players were like they were unable to run. Yeah. So I was asking myself a lot of questions. Is the reason I'm asking, were we there? No. I will say no, and I will say no. I, I wouldn't want Ghanaians to blame Kosiapia. Uh, and I'm not going to blame anyone else, but I'm going to blame what I saw on my field as a fitness coach. Do you understand? I saw something during the preparation of the Blasters prior to Egypt. That is before the tournament. Before the tournament. And honestly, I was surprised. Why? Because before the squad were called, or before they came into camp, all the players have finished their league, meaning that they've played over 45 matches. People like Dede Ayu, Jordan, Wakaso, Pate were playing in week in, week out. Meaning that they came in camp with top of fitness. And when people are in top of form after playing about 45 games in a season, they need to be managed well. If you don't manage them well and you try and push them, they get fatigued. And fatigue means their concentration level is going to be poor, their reaction level is going to be poor, their speed level is going to be poor, performance and balancing. Do you get where I'm coming from? There is something I saw during the preparation that I wasn't happy. Why? Because every training that we're doing was pre-season. You don't mean it. I'm telling you, okay, they were in the beach. Some of the training I saw. Some of them, they were doing aerobics in swimming pools. Oh, but all those things make them play. Good. Oh, it, it makes them fit when they have not played 40 and over games. Oh, okay. Do you get where I'm coming from? It's good, let's say, if they haven't played games or they've played probably about 10 games and come in camp and you are trying to up the fitness level, that's fine. But after playing a whole season, any player that is coming home is in top form and if you push it too hard, they will dip. But to me, we were pushing them too hard. So the only player that I saw in the games that I realized was doing a lot was Wakaso. Why? Because Wakaso is used to coming home and always pushing himself. And others were struggling. They were struggling because I think whoever they brought in as a fitness coach failed us. Oh, wow. Yes, to me, I'll blame that person. Honestly, um, I won't miss my words. But because to me, I think it's about time we try to believe in our own. And we should explain ourselves. Why? Because if someone is coming from a long season, they don't need all that. All they need is to be managed. Keep that fitness level. That they, but if you're doing soft ground work, soft ground work, that's beach work, it takes a lot of effort to even run from here to there. Do you know from? And what it is is that uh, recovery levels, when you work on soft grounds, it's hard. It's hard to get recovered by the next day. The same as swimming. I mean, I know you've probably swum before. Yeah. You know how you feel the next day. You feel heavy yeah. and all that good. So that means recovery level is very, very slow. So all these things affected us during the tournament. Wow. You know, hence, the, I think the coach put his tactics right there. But our performance, reaction, everything else was poor. Was poor because of what we have put these guys' bodies through prior to the tournament. Well, um, I think you were enjoying uh, the show, but then um, I would want Nana to tell us a little more about Fit and Fine Gym, where it is located, how you can get on board to put yourself in shape. Of course, I know privately it works for a lot of, you know, stars, business people in corporate organizations and the rest. But Nana, um, 
Where is Fit and Fine Gym located? Fit and Fine Gym is located on the Christian Village Domepilla 2 Road, opposite a restaurant called Becky's. You cannot miss Fit and Fine at all. You see a big sign um, out there. And my idea of bringing Fit and Fine was my love for fitness, and I realized that a lot of people were paying so much money for gyms in Ghana. It was making it look as if gym is only for the rich when you come to Ghana. So I thought I would do something that at least the average Ghanaian to can come to. Because if people are getting paid, let's say, a thousand Ghana, and a gym is charging a thousand Ghana, how does the person, even 500 Ghana cities a month, how do you expect the person to be part of a gym or to be part of some kind of sort of fitness regime? So Fit and Fire Gym is based on affordability. Okay. professionalism anyone that walks in our doors has free personal training we are the only gym that doesn't charge anything for personal training you come here we, we attend to you you we make sure you achieve your fitness goals whether you are a newbie or you are a, a, a professional or you are a normal gym goer we are always here for you to help you to achieve your fitness goals uh, we can you can get us on 0555 uh, 862 804 you can get fit and find gym ghana on instagram fit and find gym on facebook okay. um it's been a very educative and uh, interactive session and i believe you followed you watched you listened but finally um, before you go i know um on personal levels you offer one-on-one uh, -on -one training yes. to a lot of black stars players that i know but do you also give one-on-one -on -one training advice sessions to people? Oh, yes. Um, any individual that comes into Fit and Fine or even call me that needs any sort of um, 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 support or any sort of uh, professional advice, we are always there. Um, regardless your size, regardless your age, regardless what you do, we always find a balance in what you do, age, size, for something that will suit you. So any individuals, I'm not only here for footballers or just professionals. Even if you are a newbie that you want to start some sort of fitness, depending what you want. Some people walk in, 90% will tell, oh, my belly, my this, my that. So it's, it's how, obviously, you give them professional advice, where they can start from, what they can eat, and all that plays into how people can lose weight, or people who, some people even come in, they want to put on weight. So these little, little advices are there for people to take and take on board. Hey, my name is Derek Oseusu. People who know me as Nase, the CEO of Fit and Fine Gym. Keep watching Seinu TV. Thank you very much, uh, Taribo West. Just like I told you, you see something like this. I told you the other time that just give me two months, it will run away. And then you see how see that Taribo is. Very soon you see my life. <laughs> Catch me up again. It's Seinu TV. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.